What if I were to tell you that everything you were doing online, every website you went to, everything you typed into those websites was viewable to anybody around you? Well, if you ever connect to an open Wi-Fi hotspot, that is exactly what happens. And I'm talking about any Wi-Fi access point that doesn't require a password to initially log in. So at the airport or hotel or coffee shop, any of those. And I'm not talking about the type of password where you connect to the point and then it brings up a web page to log in. That is not a secured access point. It needs to be one where you type in the password before you can even access anything, right as soon as you connect to it. So how is this possible? How can anybody snoop in on your connection if you're using a Wi-Fi hotspot? Well, it has to do with how the connection works between your computer and the router. On a router that requires a password, hopefully like the one you're using at home, if you're not using a Wi-Fi password on your home router, you got something coming for you. I'm just telling you that right now. But anyway, when you use a password, that means that that router encrypts all the connection between your computer or anything else and that router using that password. So anybody snooping in can't see what websites you're going to, what you're typing in, what you're downloading, what services you're using, anything like that. And if someone did try to snoop in on it, if they were off to the side with a radio antenna or something next to your house, if they were to receive those signals, it would just be a bunch of gibberish because it's all encrypted and they don't have the password, so that's why it's safe. But if you connect to a Wi-Fi hotspot that is open, that doesn't need a password to connect initially, that means that anything you send to that router and back is unencrypted and can be received by anyone. Obviously, you can't have a password or else it wouldn't be public. No one would be able to connect to it. So that means that anybody within range can just set up a Wi-Fi receiver and collect anything that's coming by, even if they are not connected to that access point themselves, even if they're not connected to the Wi-Fi. They can still see that everything your computer is just broadcasting out hoping it gets to that router, so they can see any websites you're going to, what you're typing into those websites, what you're downloading, everything. So you can see how this is a big issue, but is really everything viewable by a hacker who's nearby? Okay, I may have exaggerated a little bit, but it's not that far from the truth. You see, in a case where they wouldn't really be able to see anything, is where most websites, hopefully on the checkout pages, or like your bank, they might use what is called SSL or TLS, or if you look on the browser, it'll say HTTPS. That means that that connection to that specific web page is encrypted between you and the website. So any information in that specific connection would be gibberish if someone were to listen in. But it's important to remember that not every website uses SSL or TLS, and not all of them use it on every web page within it. So I kind of mentioned that important websites like banks and hopefully email websites will use it on the entire site so you can't see anything. But sometimes a website might only use it on the login page or a checkout page for a shopping cart and everything else is still unencrypted. And even using HTTPS is not foolproof if the hacker does what is called a man in the middle attack. So what they might do is set up a fake Wi-Fi hotspot altogether. It just says public Wi-Fi and people connect to it thinking it's free. But what happens is all that traffic is going through that hacker's connection. This could be a fake hotspot that looks like the one you're actually looking for. So someone might make up the one that looks exactly like your hotel Wi-Fi, or there are even devices that will look for signals that your computer sends out normally to look for Wi-Fi hotspots that it remembers and then once your computer sends out that signal, it will reply, oh yes, that's me, I'm the hotspot you're looking for, then your computer will connect to it and think it's connecting to something safe, and when it goes to use that password, it'll just automatically say, oh yeah, that's, yeah, sure, that's the password, you're right, and then again, you're connected to that fake Wi-Fi hotspot. And let me tell you, if you connect to a fake Wi-Fi hotspot that is malicious, you're screwed, my friend. Imagine this, you go to your banking website while you're connected to a fake Wi-Fi hotspot. Yeah, you might see that it's HTTPS. You're thinking, all right, that's a secured connection. But guess what? That's not the real banking website. That hacker set up on their fake server thing a fake website that looks exactly like the one that you were looking for and redirects your request to that and sets up a fake secure connection. So it looks like you're securely connected to uh, Wells Fargo or Bank of America, but really it's not that. 
So it all looks like it's on the up and up, but anything you send to it is captured from the hacker or maybe even forwarded. So anything that comes back looks legitimate, but they were in the middle. So they got everything unencrypted because you weren't really securely connected to the website you're looking for directly. So basically never use public Wi-Fi for banking or other important websites. It's just not worth the risk. And you might be thinking, well, you know what? I never go to coffee shops and I don't connect at the airport. I never use open Wi-Fi. Well, have you ever been on vacation? Have you ever connected to hotel Wi-Fi? Then you used open Wi-Fi. Now you might say, but I used a password to connect. I had to type in my room number, my last name, all that, and then I was able to use the internet. Yeah, but the actual connection to the router was not password protected. That was another system they have after you connected the router. So anything still going between you and the router is just in the open air, unencrypted, anyone snooping in, on the wireless connection can just see what's going on. And get this, even if you're in a public place and they do have a password, it's a WPA2 encrypted connection, you have to connect with the password, you're still not safe. Imagine this, you're at a coffee shop, they post the SSID for the access point and the password right below it, so you have to type that in to connect. It's encrypted, right? Well, guess what? Everyone has the password, so they can just decrypt all the information going to it. So yes, even though the connections are encrypted between you and the router, you can use the password, which is posted right on the wall, or the one they just hand out, and you can decrypt anything. So all a hacker has to do is use the publicly available password to decrypt everyone who's connected to the public network. So you are at risk if you use any public Wi-Fi, even if it's password protected, if that password is publicly available. And that's also why you really shouldn't give out your Wi-Fi password to people you don't know, because then they now have the potential to just decrypt everything you're doing from now on unless you change it. Now you're probably thinking, hold on, what am I supposed to do then? Not use Wi-Fi on vacation ever again? Well, actually there is something you can do to secure yourself if you have to use public Wi-Fi. Now, first of all, this isn't the main thing, but anytime you connect to open Wi-Fi, Windows usually pops up a thing that asks you what type of network. You definitely wanna hit public network, which will disable file sharing because otherwise anyone on that network can probably access your computer. So you wanna disable file sharing before you do any of that. But the main thing you're gonna to wanna to do is get a VPN, a virtual private network. These are not free services, but they are your best bet. A VPN basically creates a secure connection between you and that service, and then funnels all your internet connection through that encrypted connection, and then passes it on at the end to the actual website you wanna to go to. So in that case, even if you're connected to public Wi-Fi, that VPN service is gonna secure the connection the whole way, so no one could even snoop in, even though the connection between the router and you isn't secure, the connection between you and everything else is secured, so it's fine. And this makes it so literally no one can see what's going on. Even a lot of people will use this if their internet service provider throttles certain connections. You can use a VPN so the internet company is gonna see that you're connected to the VPN, but that's literally all they can see. They can't see what you're downloading, all they can see is how much you're downloading. Now you might be wondering, well, hold on, if all the connection is going through the VPN, then that service can see everything you're doing. Okay, fair enough point, but that's not necessarily true because on important websites, hopefully you're still using HTTPS in a secure connection. And that is just between you and the website directly. So even the VPN can't see what's going on in that. So it's kind of double encrypted. So yes, theoretically the VPN service could see anything you're sending unencrypted, but if it's a reputable company, then it's better than the alternative, which is literally everyone being able to see that. Though in any case, even if you're using a VPN, you should still be careful for which access points you connect to. For the same reason I mentioned before, it might be a honeypot where it kind of tries to attract all these other computers that connect to it automatically, even if you don't want to, or if it looks like the one you're looking for and it's not actually. And obviously if you're out in public and you see some random Wi-Fi name like Bob's free Wi-Fi, yeah, don't connect to that one. I personally do use a VPN anytime I'm not at home, like I'm traveling or something like that for my computer, and I typically don't even connect to Wi-Fi on my phone because I have unlimited data, so I just stay connected to the cell company. So if you do travel a lot, I highly recommend getting a VPN 
The one I use is called Private Internet Access. I'm not getting paid to say that. There's no affiliate links or anything. Um, if you're just wondering which one I use, that's it. I think it's really cheap, it's like five bucks a month. They're based in the US. I don't think they keep logs pretty reputable. But in any case, hopefully all this information was pretty useful and you learned something from it. So if you guys did like this video, obviously give it a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. And let me know down in the comment section what you think. If you have a VPN service that you recommend, let us know. And also if you have any other ideas for how to be secure, let us know down there as well. If you guys want to keep watching, I'll put some links over here. You can click these even if you're on a phone. And if you want to subscribe, I try to make new videos at least three times a week, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, so it should definitely be worth it. And also consider clicking the bell next to the subscribe button so you get notifications every time I upload a video. Otherwise, YouTube's algorithm is probably not going to show you them otherwise. So as usual, thanks again for watching, guys. I hope to see you next time and hope you enjoyed the video. Have a good one.